Welcome, uh, my name is Lois Kwa. I'm with the Adult Learning Center at the Public Library of Cincinnati in Hamilton County. And thank you for joining us today for our Lunch and Learn live session on Facebook. Um, at the Adult Learning Center, we provide services for many different types of adult education, including workforce development, English as a second language, uh, resource referral, and continuing education. Um, and this week, I'm going to be introducing the topic of journaling. So um, this is a session for if you would like to start a journaling practice this summer, um, kind of explore a practice you already have or share the information with anyone else in your life who might be interested. Um, next, the, not next Thursday, but this coming Thursday on Lunch and Learn Live, the manager of the Adult Learning Center, Keith Armour, will be hosting a session on homework help now, um, learning during the summer. So please join us for that if you can. Uh, if you have any questions at all about the content that you see today or have or any of our services in general, please feel free to reach out to us. Our email is at cincinnatilibrary.org um, and we'd be very happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, okay. So what I'm going to do now is we're to um, kind of sharing my screen with you so you can um, see the presentation and also kind of see what it feels like to go to the outside links and websites that we're going to explore. Um, and then after that, we'll open up the floor again for Q&A if there are any questions in the comments. Okay. okay. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit more about journaling, um, what it is, why we, what are some benefits of doing it, um, and then also regardless of whether journaling is already an active part of your life or you are um, just getting started exploring it or you would like to be able to um, share it with other people who might be interested in doing it, um, we'll look at some ideas, tips, strategies, um, and also outside resources that hopefully will be helpful no matter where you're at in the process. Okay. So um, what is journaling? Well, journaling is recording your thoughts, feelings, and life experiences, um, and it can also be kind of like making a record of your everyday life. Um, so some people journal every day, and um, at the end of a year or a period of time, they can look back and see um, and reflect on things that happened, um, how they thought and felt about it, um, and also their personal experiences of any, any type. Um, journaling can be a tool for self-exploration and health, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute, um, but it's a really helpful practice for um, kind of taking care of yourself, relieving your stress, um, and also learning more about yourself as you go. Um, journaling is a practice, and um, practice is something that we do over time. Um, studies have shown that journaling is most beneficial personally when done steadily um, and frequently, but um, journaling is also a personal practice, which means that no matter how often you do it or when you reach for it, um, you know, if any time that you journal is, is a great thing. Um, some people find a lot of value in trying to commit to doing it regularly, um, like, like exercise or making time for family, um, things like that. But the more that you do journaling, um, the more you can kind of develop your relationship with writing down your thoughts and feelings. Um, lastly, journaling is for you, just you. Uh, so this means that no matter what journaling looks like, um, where you do it, how often you do it, um, how long you do it for, um, different tools that you reach for, or creative ways that you express yourself, so long as um, journaling is a is helping you to find enjoyment, fun, um, relief, um, or helps you feel like you're growing. You know, it's completely personal and um, there's no wrong way to journal, which is, I think, the most exciting part about it. So what are some reasons um, that journaling is a great tool? Well, journaling can be an outlet for stress relief. Um, a lot, a very common way that some people use journaling is to write about challenging things that are happening or exciting or, um, you know, stressful things of any kind, like big life events. Writing about it can help process um, the events of a human life. So, and it's also, um, it's a personal outlet. It's, you know, no one else has to see it. It's just for you. So you don't have to, um, you don't have to worry about not expressing feelings or thoughts. You can really um, be free in a journal. 
to look at your life. Um, journaling also supports mental and emotional health. Um, studies have shown that constant journaling can help with cognitive function and also um, calm and um, lower levels of stress over time. Um, journaling about one's life and your feelings can also help you process um, emotions and uh, get get a different perspective, process life in a different way. Um, journaling can help with problem solving. Sometimes if you're writing out a situation, you might not um, feel like you can really see it clearly, but after the process of writing it out at length, um, a lot of people have ideas that they might not have had before they were writing through it. And again, nobody else has to see it. It's just for you, so you don't have to, um, you don't have to worry about outside influence. You can really dig deep into your personal problem solving process. Um, again, there are scientifically proven health benefits to journaling. Um, it has been shown to um, support immune system support, also um, cognitive function, as we said before, and also um, improve stress levels, which and um, improved stress levels help with other physical health experiences as well. Um, journaling is a wonderful tool for self-discovery and personal growth. Um, not only can you look back over time and see how things have changed or ways that you perceive things have changed because you were writing about your experiences. Um, but in the very process of journaling, a lot of people find that they, um, they have new ideas and new ways that they see themselves and others. So it's, it's really a safe personal way to really explore one's own life. And lastly, uh, journaling can be fun. It can be a lot of enjoyment and um, pleasure in uh, first keeping a journal for yourself. Um, giving time to write about your thoughts and feelings. It can be a really um, calming, pleasurable practice that people keep in their life. And um, this is a very important reason why journaling can be encouraged. Okay, so we're going to look at some tips, prompts, and resources um, to help make journaling a part of your life. And regardless of whether you are already an avid journaler or you're just beginning to explore and you've never done it before but are interested, or if you know someone like maybe a, um, a child or a friend or another person that you care about um, that you would be interested in exploring journaling with, um, hopefully something in the following is going to be helpful for you. Okay, so first just kind of like the nuts and bolts of how to journal. Uh, physical journaling is the most conventional method. When we talk about journaling, we might imagine somebody sitting down with a paper notebook and a pen or a pencil and then um, writing out a page, writing about their day. Um, something that I've seen in pop culture a lot when I was growing up was like Dear Diary. Someone would start writing Dear Diary and then they write a letter about what happened in their day. Um, or uh, you can write just um, today I felt like this or today something happened. So that is physical journaling. It's going to require um, a physical notebook or journal um, and then a writing utensil, so just something that you can write in it and that will be it. Uh, physical journaling is um, the uh, benefit that can be taken from this is the process of physically writing out thoughts and feelings can be really beneficial. Um, there's a certain feeling that some people get when they are actually writing down their feelings on paper that um, helps to process them in a slightly different way. So some people really love physical, physical journaling for this reason. Um, when you have an actual notebook or journal that's made out of paper, it's also an opportunity to use your favorite coloring pens, pencils, crayons, and markers, and anything else that you can use as a writing utensil that you might not normally use in your everyday life um, when writing things that other people have to receive or see. This is just for you. So you can really, um, you can really play with um, writing in ways or, or uh, decorating in ways that feel good for you. This includes creative use of notebook space that you might not be able to use uh, in other formats. You can draw in a journal, you can um, collage, um, I've seen some people make really great use of stickers, um, you can decorate the inside and the outside of a notebook. Um, a popular activity um, that some kids have done during summer adventure, for example, was making journals out of notebooks and decorating the covers with um, different types of duct tape to make them more colorful or vibrant. So you can really um, get physically creative with a physical journal. 
there's also virtual journaling, um, and there are also benefits to this that some people might really prefer instead of physical journaling, or um, aspects of virtual journaling that can make journaling more accessible um, if it's not with like a paper notebook. So um, the first thing is that virtual journaling is it's a creative way to journal. It's not necessarily what people first think of when you hear the word, but um, maybe that will change over time. It is very convenient. If you use, um, say, your smartphone, a computer, or another tech device, um, you can journal in many different places and at many times. You don't have to sit down and have your paper notebook and a pen with you. If, if you're someone who has a phone on you a whole lot, then you have um, access to your journal at all times that you do keep your phone with you nearby. Another cool thing about virtual journaling is uh, you can easily include photos, videos, links, um, social media even if that's a really big part of your life. Basically anything that you can include in your tech, uh, your tech life, you can more easily include it in your journal. And um, what that means is if you look back on your journal over time, you can have access to um, photos, videos, media, what they meant to you. Um, there's also options, and this is really exciting, with virtual journaling and um, some of the resources we'll look at, there is the possibility to journal without having to deal too much with the written verbal part. Um, there is one app which is really cool which enables dictation, which means you can talk into your phone and it will transcribe what you say into a journal entry. So this can be really freeing for some people um, who process uh, journaling and thoughts and feelings in, in this way primarily. There's also um, a resource that enables non-written journaling, so you can track your mood using visuals um, and you can kind of focus more on including media instead of writing out sentences if that is a, um, if that is a way that enables more creative expression, so that's pretty cool. Um, virtual journaling also makes it really easy to create a personal record of your life because if you save a journal in um, a program or an app, one thing that's easier to do in this than in a physical journal is you can actually search within the journal for different keywords, tags, people, places, um, and see all the entries related to that. So you can actually kind of process the record of your daily life in a, in a different creative way. All right, so um, some virtual journaling ideas. One is going to be emailing yourself. Um, so if you have an email account, one thing you can do is hit compose or new message and then um, instead of writing an email to someone else, you actually put your own email address in the send to box or the um, recipient box, right? Um, and then in the body of the email, you can just start typing um, like today I felt like this or here's a thing that happened. Basically, it's like a dear diary that you're writing to yourself and when you send the email, um, you will receive it in your inbox and you can um, save all your entries and your, your journal will be there. Right? One thing you do want to do if you're going to um, try the suggestion is to always double check the send to box to make sure that it's just you that you're sending the email to. Um, just a handy, handy tip. Um, and also it can help to create a folder to save your save these entries to um, so that you have easy access to like um, just one folder that's all your journal entries. Um, if you're going to use email, it's also important to feel like you're um, to feel safe about your account, right? If you have any concerns about um, your email, like for example, if you share an email with other people and you don't want them to see your journal entries, then we might want to look at another option, which I'll discuss next. Um, but yeah, so long as you feel that that's um, a secure place, then you can do that. Um, and that is kind of, that emailing oneself is kind of interesting because um, you can pretend that you're writing a letter, but no one else is going to read it. It's just for you. But sometimes just the act of starting a letter to somebody um, helps to kind of um, to kind of unlock, like helps to relax the um, relax expressing and can make it easy to write more freely about your thoughts and feelings. Um, another really cool option for virtual journaling is journaling apps and programs, many of which are free or have a free option. And we are going to look um, after this slideshow. We are going to look at some highly ranked ones and look at different features of them. Now, different apps are going to have um, 
different highlights and, and different things that might be drawbacks. Like for example, if you only use um, Apple devices, then you're not going to want to try to use an app that is only built for Windows perhaps, but we'll look at some that for every um, as many different options of devices as possible. Um, and one thing also is that uh, if you remember earlier, we talked about how some um, some apps are going to be better for, for example, like writing a lot, and then some apps are going to be better for like if you'd like to speak into your phone and record. We'll look at the different specific ones for that. Okay, so here are some um, tips for journaling. Um, Things that can be helpful include, for one, um, like setting a short timer. I, I recommend this, um, encourage people to do this when um, the issue of feeling a little bit overwhelmed by journaling crop comes up. Um, like there have been times when I've thought, oh man, I really think it'd be great to journal about this, but um, the thought of sitting down for an hour makes me feel tired already and I don't even want to try and I don't know where to begin. And what has helped me and um, other people that I know is to set a short timer um, for a really short period of time and only commit to that. So for example, um, I do five minutes. So if I, set, I say, okay, I'm going to write for five minutes and after that I can stop, that actually helps me to relax a little bit and to um, feel more like I can start writing. Um, I, but I actually even re recommend um, shorter timers, like three or two minutes. Like, okay, if I did it, maybe I can write for two minutes straight um, and then see what happens. And if the timer goes off and um, you still want to keep writing, then that's great and you can keep writing. And um, if the timer goes off and you're done, then that's then you congratulate yourself. You wrote um, a journal entry. It's, so that's something that can be helpful. Um, setting reminders. This is for people who um, really want to try make journaling a more regular part of their life. Um, you can set reminders in, for example, a phone if you have one. Um, like a, some people like to set a daily reminder when in the morning, like, oh, I'd like to journal in the morning, or in the evening, or different times, or once a week or twice a week. So uh, reminders can be personalized, and that's what's great. You can kind of decide, oh, every you know, um, every three days maybe I'd like to make time to journal, and then you can have that go off automatically. Some of the apps that we're going to look at do include automated reminders, so you can actually, if you download the app, it will send you a notification at the time you want it to, to uh, remind you to go ahead and journal. All right, um, and then keeping it simple can help sometimes. Um, you know, it's always, it's always a great prompt to just start with today I feel and then um, see what comes up. Um, you can also experiment with your own prompts that um, are different every time if that's something that makes you feel good about journaling. So, um, you know, you could write about how you felt or you could write about what you think about current event situations that are happening. Um, you could write about a memory that you have of something that happened before. Um, the possibilities are completely endless and only limited by what you would like your journaling practice to look like. Um, if you are kind of stuck in a rut and you're not sure what to do next, you can always ask yourself, what is something I haven't journaled about before? Um, make a short list and then pick something off of it. So um, trying new things is always possible. Remember, there's no wrong way to journal. Um, and then lastly, it's great to continue to learn what makes journaling relaxing, enjoyable, and nurturing for you personally. Um, the best thing about journaling is that it doesn't have to look any one specific way. And at, the more you do it, the more you will learn um, what different practices or um, different uh, things you like to include or ways or times that you do it um, are going to feel best for you. And the more you learn about it, the more you can reach for those things and really make a journaling practice special for you. Okay. These are just a few prompts um, that I sometimes share with people um, who would like them. Um, again, the possibilities are endless. So you can, you can take these, you can write your own, you can change the wording slightly. Um, these are just three. And so the first prompt um, is to write about a time when technology helped you feel more connected to someone that you care about. And how did the experience make you feel? Um, sometimes what if, if you are writing and you're not really sure where to go next, um, how did the experience make you feel is always a nice place to go. Um, for those of us who enjoy specific little writing challenges, you can um, try to write about 
your feelings using the five senses. So, um, for example, you can try to remember what the experience looked like. Um, if you had any other senses involved, like your, um, like the smell of the environment or, um, touch or, um, I'm forgetting them already taste. And then there's another one out oh, hearing. Yes. So, um, if you ever want to write about how things make you feel, you can always try that. Um, but that's the first prompt. Um, and then there's also, what is something you saw, heard, shared, or experienced recently that made you feel inspired? And this is one, a prompt that um, I like to use pretty frequently because there's, there's so much um, going on in the world and that we um, encounter with each other and also just exploring um, that can really make you think about things in a new way. So you can use this frequently or you can also make it a group shared prompt frequently to share with others and we'll talk about that in a little bit. All right, and then also what is a hope that you have for yourself and your community? And this is also a prompt that um, can be used somewhat regularly. Right. Um, one nice thing about prompts is that there's no, um, in a journal, there's no instructions for what to do with it. If you took a prompt and you wrote about it for one minute, and that was a great experience, and that's awesome. You've, you've done a journal prompt. If you take a prompt and you wrote about it for longer than that, and then you keep returning to it um, again in the future, that's also awesome. It's really whatever um, different prompts mean to you, you can take them and go with them. You can also make up your own prompts and keep them in a place like um, um, some people keep a notes file on their phone or computer, or you can keep an actual jar and um, write prompts on a note and then put the notes in the jar to save for later um, for yourself. There's really, um, again, possibilities are endless and you can do a lot with that. Okay, and then lastly, journaling, last, lastly, journaling um, is a very personal practice, but it, it can also be related to connecting with others in different ways. Um, the first thing is that sometimes the things we learn about ourselves when we journal, um, we can help bring what we learn into our families or our communities and share um, that self-knowledge with others. So that's one way that keeping a really personal practice can connect to the outside world. Uh, but there's also, also other practical ways that we can use journaling to um, connect with people we care about. Um, for one thing, everything that has been shared here is um, a practice that teens and younger children and even younger children can do as well. Um, so if you've seen anything here that you think um, a younger person in your life might benefit from, you can help them explore journaling practice or at least learn more about it so that maybe they can um, go, they can take it with them. Um, into life. Um, the It's also fun to, um, it's it's fun to make journals with, with other people as well. So for example, the, um, the exercise where you can decorate the cover of a notebook or journal, that's something that can be done together. Um, some people have group chats with friends and family and you can involve journaling in that too. For example, you could um, kind of rotate among members of your group chat um, that somebody comes up with a different prompt every week and then that's the prompt that everybody maybe tries to journal about and at the end uh, people can share as much or as little as they want about what that journaling process was like for them. Um, one thing that's also possible is to share clips from your journal. So um, sometimes we might journal and write something or think about something or come to a realization that we really like. Um, you can make, you can pick a person that you trust and um, like to share things with and share an excerpt. It doesn't have to be much. It can be just a little bit, but sometimes sharing parts of our journal with other people um, is a way to really build connection with others. Okay, now that is it for the presentation. We're going to switch to um, looking at some outside resources. So I mentioned free apps and programs for journaling for um, those of you who might be interested in virtual journaling instead of paper journaling. Um, this is an article written by Melanie Panola. Uh, it's an outside article, but it does list some um, some useful information and a breakdown of all these different apps. So we're just going to look at, um, I think it's eight of them, a little bit more, right? Okay. 
and um, if we would like to see this full article, we're going to throw the link up in the comments area too, so that you could read the full thing because we're just going to look at the different um, different programs. Um, all of these do have a free option. A lot of them have a not free option that includes extra features if you pay, um, but all of the ones that we're going to talk about are ones that have good journaling access um, regardless of if you're paying. So there's, we're going to talk about it as if just look at the free options. Okay, so this is something called Day One. Um, it runs on Apple products as well as Android. Um, it's been out since 2011, and this article says that it's one of the most highly recommended apps, um, so it's very popular. Um, it seems to be a pretty commonly um, well-working kind of full-range product. Um, so you can, you can see how, what it looks like in this screen here. Um, you can make different entries and write, and you can also include pictures and media, and this is something that most of these apps is going to include. Um, one thing that is going to be popular with this is um, that it allows you to customize multiple reminders, so uh, maybe you don't just want one reminder throughout the day, but um, you have different types of journal reminders you'd like to make, this is going to do that. Okay. All right. So this is written about as the best journal app for Windows users. So if you mainly use a desktop computer and you use Windows on it, um, this program is going to do that. Okay, so this is going. This is like a cool app if you um, if multiple media is going to be important, which is pretty cool. This is one of the apps where you can do speech instead of typing. Um, so you can dictate your thoughts, you can just speak your journal entry and the program will translate it for you. Um, you can also attach audio files, drawings, other files. Um, you can also rate your journal entries. So this is this is one that's supposed to work really well in those capacities for Windows. Um, now with a lot of the apps we're gonna see, you can kind of see in this photo here, it has a it has like a weather rating here. Some of the apps um, are actually going to, you're, you can import like the weather for the day, you can um, do maps and other um, other media that you can include pretty easily. So this is one of them. Okay, now this is Journey. Um, it's listed as the best journal app for cross-platform journaling. Right? So this means that you can um, import journal entries from, let's say you have day one that we looked at earlier and other programs, you can actually import journal entries from there into here and it will keep them all as one journal. Um, this is what the screen looks like, right? Uh, if you get journey. It's also going to work well if you're someone who keeps a lot of different devices. This is supposed to be one that works really well with them. So if you work a lot on uh, multiple phones or multiple laptops, they should all sync pretty easily. Okay, and then the best journal app for secure journaling. Um, this, you can see, this looks almost like um, writing in a blog. It's called Penzu. So when you open new entries, it's going to look here and, and you can type and write here. Um, but one reason that Penzu is included here is that it is um, privacy centered. Um, a lot of the other apps are too, but this one was rated the best for locking your journal with a special password, which is different from just an account, um, securing contact with encryption, and choosing to auto-lock the journal at all times. So this can really help with a sense of security. All right, this is the best journal app for, they say, social media power users. So that means if you're, um, you know, really active on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, you are, they point out you're basically already keeping a journal, it's just that it's uh, public and spread out across multiple sites. So what Memento is going to do, it's going to bring all of your shared posts and interactions from all of your social media sites into one place so that you have a digital archive of your social media um, and you can see your life organized that way and not spread out across all the different apps. Um, this includes not just Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, things like that, but also um, they will support 11 feeds, including Spotify, YouTube. Um, and you can also create journal entries like you would in the other journaling apps. So you can just kind of open up a window and start writing. 
So this is a different way to organize kind of your a record of your daily life, which is pretty cool. Okay. Um, okay, there's a pop up that came up. I'm not sure how to lower it, so we're going to ignore it. This is the best journal app for templated journaling. It's called Grid Diary, and I think the the title is kind of self exploratory. When you open up the app, this is what it's going to look like, and you can see there's different little squares, and they all have different little journal prompts in them. So, um, for example, this one says, "What problem did I encounter today? How did I solve it?" Um, um, or, "What activities did I participate in today, and with whom?" Right. So. This is going to, instead of being freeform, every day present you with eight question prompts in a grid. Um, and then there's different grid templates you can choose from. You can customize the grid and questions yourself in, to focus on different areas of life that you care most about. Uh, so this one is kind of good for if um, trying to think up writing prompts or trying to decide where to start is uh, kind of a head scratcher. Grid diary is going to make it a lot easier because it really kind of gives you the direction right off the bat. Another popular app is Five Minute Journal, right? and this uh, works on both Apple products and Android products. Um, so this write-up, you know, hopefully points out that if you're new to journaling, um, writing down your thoughts and feelings can feel daunting or challenging. Um, five Minute Journal is going to have this kind of simple format where every time you open up the journaling app, um, it prompts you to write, for example, three things. Um, three things that. I'm grateful for, um, three things I can do to make today great daily affirmations, three amazing things that happened today. So it's going to kind of give you the same prompt as um, Grid Diary, but in a really nice kind of thoughtful list format. Okay, and then this is the best journal app for non-writers. I think this one is super cool. This is called Dailyo and um, it's supported on Apple as well as Android products. Now, this is really good for um, more visual people. So for example, if you open it up, there's a, um, there's a ranking that says, it's just like, how are you? And then you can answer using um, the visual selection here and then keep going and um, what's cool about that is you can see over time like how you answered this question and um, a journal entry in dailyo captures your mood and activities for the day but none of the answers require typing so um, there's icons that you can choose to represent what you did um, you can pick your mood as we saw with the visuals up here um, and then you can also set reminders and do other kind of standard journaling features like um, setting goals um, and also checking out your monthly counts for how you answered your journal. Um, so this one is going to be really cool for that. And that is going to be the last one that we saw. Yeah, so this one and also um, the app, I'll just do this as a reminder, this one for Windows um, is going to be really great for kind of less written, less written journaling. Just another example of how creative journaling can get and how um, there are different ways to access the benefits that it can provide. Okay, I think we're, um, we went through all of them and we're kind of running out of time. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of here um, and then uh, open the floor up for questions if there were any in the comments. Okay, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, again, this upcoming Thursday, uh, the manager of the Adult Learning Center, Keith Armour, will be hosting a session on homework help now. So please just for that if you can. Um, I hope that if you saw this, that some of it might have been helpful, but um, have a really great rest of your day and we will see you next time.